If you look at what's happening now, real, really, let's look at the cabinet we have. Let's look at the whole leadership. What political background do they have? The question that we need to ask ourselves is, are we going to do what he wants or are we going to be journalists? Whatever is left of us. He's not an absolute monarch. He's not an absolute dictator. He is there to serve a Maswat. We as editors once had a, a close session meeting with uh, the late Prime Minister Panabas, and we were discussing an issue and he was telling us where government's position was, and we started a discussion. And in that discussion, he said, I think he was responding to one of my colleagues who had asked him a question, and he said, you know, the day the media and government are friends, something will have gone wrong with the country. Because everybody wants to look like they are useful. So to be useless, is to say go Thank you so much, Mr. Makubu, for, for, for joining us at the bridge. I see you are making headlines with your uh, quote unquote fights with uh, honorable MP welcome Ganyina Hulmenda around the issues of regulation and state regulation and media in general. Uh, I don't know, are you not tired of this fight with the powers that being over? <laughs> You uh, you have seen the inside of where Mbakete is, but you seem not to have given up the sting that you've always had. Um, to be honest with you, I am tired. I, I'm tired. I feel. I'm you can too adjust, old. by the way, yeah. the, the mic. I'm, I'm, I feel I'm too old for this kind of thing. I'm, I'm over 50 now. Uh, I should be taking it easy and looking at things that are important. But, you know, we live in a, in a society that's where it's difficult to survive. You know, there are always threats. And in the media in particular, uh, where I've always been, we were always under threat. We are, they are always, uh, there's always a politician who wants to do something about the media because accountability seems to be a problem with leadership in this country. And I think what is interesting is, you know, I've been a journalist for 36 years and I've watched politicians come and go. Uh, and if I count correctly, I think since I started as a, as a journalist, there have been about seven prime ministers. Um, wh what I'm seeing is um, a change. I've seen the change in the quality of, 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 of politicians, particularly when it comes to how they interact with the media. And unfortunately, as we move on in life, it's, it gets scarier and scarier. So when you say change, you mean deterioration or change for the pet? Deterioration, actually, in terms <laughs> of how they interact. Yeah. You know, the, when I started out as, as a journalist, uh, the politicians we had in this country were what we would, I could easily describe as the political activists of the 60s. Oh, in yeah. their youth, they were part of the... NNLCs of this world, of this ANCs. World. And yes. Like the movements that were, remember the 60s are characterized by an Africa that is looking for independence, yes. so, uh, the, that is agitating for independence. And in the, uh, our country was no less. Mm. And, and the king at the time was agitating for independence. So there was a lot of political ac activism, political ac activity. I mean, if you look at even the media of the day, the Times of Southern, which was the only uh, media a print media existing that there was a lot of debate going on about the country about africa about the world so in so, fact the media was a, a center of intellectual uh, discourse yes, yes. And, but more but also the the those that youth was politically in tune they understand the dynamics that dif that, that the world has got difference of opinion mm. that they were criticizing the leaders of the time and so when they became leaders themselves, mm. they knew that they too are under scrutiny mm. and therefore their tolerance level of the things we said and wrote was much higher than what we see now. If you look at what's happening now, real, really, let's look at the cabinet we have. Let's look at the whole leadership. What political background do they have in their youth? I think part of the problem, we are victims of all of us, actually, including them, because they too are victims of uh, probably, we could say, that the 1973 decree. Mm -hmm. Because the 1973 decree 
killed all political discourse in this country. It made it a crime, even to Gubambu mm -hmm. if you remember. So a new generation has emerged that does not have any inkling of an idea of what nation building is about. Mm -hmm. So people are appointed into office by the king and they come from totally different backgrounds to what they have, no experience, no understanding how to deal with people. So they are always scared. Mm. And the first thing that they will look to is the media to say, if we can shut down the media, maybe without anyone, so that the mistakes that they make may not be called out. They don't want that. Mm. So there's that deterioration, that lack of uh, tolerance that we are seeing. Um, and right now, with the with with the government that the king has put together, you know, in November last year, I'm 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 blown away at what we are seeing. But wouldn't it not be that also the politicians would say, looking back at the journalists of the time we used to have, the Mashumi Twalas, the Begi Makubus, the Vuskinizas, going back, there has also been a deterioration in the media itself. Look at the quality of journalism we're seeing both online and print and every other institution. Is well, it not a fair criticism to the media itself? Well, the truth is we're all victims of ourselves yeah. and how we have, we have uh, defined ourselves. Let's take, for instance, that era of Bomashumi, James Lamini, uh, Tiger Makakula, Vuskininza, and everyone. You know, if you go to the archives and look at the newspapers then, I mean, wow. You know, I always think that the one of the most, the golden era of journalism in this country was probably the 90s. Mm. Where if you look at the stuff we wrote. But most importantly, we had a government, politicians, they would actually, and, and this is what made them different. And, and this, this example I'm giving goes back to the 60s, mm. actually, if you look at it. They would actually write in to the newspapers mm. oh, yes. and, and oh, yes. express an opinion differing with a, an, an article that was written by a, a journalist or an editor. As opposed to litigation as, and threats. As opposed oh, yeah. to litigation and threats mm. and standing up with a microphone mm. and asking for measures to keep them in. Mm. They would engage in intellectual discourse mm. because they understood that that politics, that's what politics is about. Yeah. Nyalo, you don't get that. They, they can't, what we have now are politicians who can't explain the decisions they, they make. On the other hand, when it comes to the media, the media, in, because of the threats that have been there, has tried to tone down to the point where it, I sometimes think things are ridiculous. Mm. But all in a bid to say, I see, you know. And yet, by its nature, the media does not come to deal with governments. But something unique has been happening in this country where the media has been trying to accommodate politicians while also trying to, to, to do its job. Yeah. So today, when a, when a journalist comes into the newsroom, whether Utamgelim Kokuin or university or anywhere else, they are not taught and trained on the job or whatever. The, 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 how far a journalist can go that in fact journalism is about calling those in power to account uh, it, it, it's become a problem a and by the way th this problem if you pay attention is not even uh, a, a unique to this country to that extent if you look at even Boma they have they have the same problem because, they because of these threats that politicians make because what has happened in the world today is greed, money, has taken over everything. But you see, Makubo, I really understand, and uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm gonna play the devil's advocate here. If I'm seated here, even uncool, uncriticizer as a politician, I say, granted, fair. We, the quality of politician has gone down, and all of that. But you are also not producing the tigers the James, the Mashumis, and the Vuskininzas as the media. So therefore, we are dealing with low-quality media that we even don't recognize anymore. Well, what do you expect? What, what, what do you expect when, let's take my case, for instance. Yeah. Um, 
was I was arrested in 2014. For what? Simply not for lying, not for getting my facts wrong, but because somebody in power was annoyed. Mm -hmm. All right, he didn't like the idea that I wrote about him. I did time in jail. What does that tell you to any other journalist, particularly younger journalists? Is that the truth, which in the Bible says will set you free? Will not. No, will not. not <laughs> if you don't write what those in power want, the question that we need to ask ourselves is, in 1994, in 1998, writing the same article, would I have gone to jail? No, no way. In this country, no way. Because the people who were governing this country then, they understood the dynamics of what was going on how the place, what the what role the media plays, and what they play, and if I had got my facts wrong, which I did not, they would have taken me on and challenged me mm -hmm. and said, "Demand an apology." Yeah, at least. At, not because they are in power, but because the facts are wrong, mm. and therefore humiliate you with the facts. With the facts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 No, I mean, if you look at what is going on, if you look at what is going on now with the present PM we have, he is dealing with a grudge that he has against the media of what happened to him in his previous life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet he's supposed to govern a country. And instead of arguing the point of how things went wrong, he has gone all over the place Mm -hmm. And talking about media regulation, ask yourself why. It's because going forward, he's now in a most media-sensitive position. Mm -hmm. He's not sure of himself because he has no political experience. But then the question, I think, Mr. Makuba, is that if, if I'm a politician, who really can I be afraid of? The Times is really not that much stinging to the government or to the powers that be, the observer, I mean, I don't even have to go there. And online, they have literally owned the online space. Government is machinery in the communication in the online space has really quadrupled in terms of its ability to communicate its message. So the government could have some crutch and everything. Who would they be afraid of? It, well, I suppose the answer to that is that we've got to look at a person's emotional intelligence. Is he comfortable in his own skin? You know, that is, he, is he confident? Because you, if you're not confident about what you're doing, you don't, have to, you, you, you don't have to look at whether the Times can criticize me. You'd have to look at, am I comfortable in my space? And you feel naked in public. I would say perhaps that's where the problem is that whereas he's wearing a suit dressed up and looking good, and as a result, he's now lashing out at everybody. So that the way I understand him listening to him, he wants us, each time we're going to write about him, to clear with him, we'll say, we would say, this is what we're going to write. And then he decides what we shouldn't print or print, like he's some super edit, because He's not sure of himself, mm -hmm. uh, and he's got a tough job. Uh, that job, we've seen prime ministers there. It's mm -hmm. not a joke. It's a big job. Um, it's a stressful job. Uh, and But the Masoati, all 1.2 million of us, we don't care about your emotional intelligence, your emotional caution. We want delivery, and Nyalo, more so because even the king has put pressure. Uzi Dengue, service delivery is at the top. So there's a lot of pressure. And that a lot of pressure creates self-doubt. But then, uh, why is this battle being fought voraciously by someone like yourself? Perhaps, understandably, so you felt the government uh, uh, reprisals. But who else is in your corner fighting the same battle, raising <sighs> these red flags? It seems as if you are the only media. Well, who else is making you, noise? You, you, you know, you're I, I, I've been talking to to colleagues. And um, I've, I've suddenly realized, good see, maybe they don't see what I think I see. Everybody is clamoring and running for the hills, uh, trying to make Russell happy. Russell is not going to issue certificates of appreciation to the media. 
He wants the media to do what he wants. The question that we need to ask ourselves is, are we going to do what he wants or are we going to be journalists? Whatever is left of us. I don't want to be his, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to be his choir boy. Um, so I am, I am pushing back because I don't believe in what he's doing. I don't believe he has the power to do what he's doing. He, he's not an absolute monarch. He's not an absolute dictator. He is there to serve a Masoid. Uh, but he's taking his position as if it's his personal uh, thing. It might be a personal achievement for him, but Lelovis Lagulo Le Masoat and Silolak. And I don't think he respects that distinction. And 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 it is for the media to remind politicians, by the way, that and your job is not to come and settle scores from your previous life. Your job is to serve a Maswat. But, but uh, maybe the question still lingers though, Mr. Makubu. Are your colleagues taking the fight or seeing the red flags are raising? I don't know if they are, they are seeing them, but I do know that they are, they, they are, um, um, uh, they, they are trying very hard to accommodate what I consider the madness of leadership in this country, mm. in the hope that perhaps once they make him happy, by go go you know you know you know the ni muntu lo 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 tsinaka funa ko glimata beso so mbambala le nyawene so so tsinya ufana mla we of in the hope go to doubt out that and sham kanzi his his attitude is yat bang enyanyisa nabantu nabo and he's kicking around go tsimiyekel i i that's what i'm seeing i'm seeing my colleagues trying bending over backwards to the point where it actually is disgusting and ridiculous trying to make him happy in the hope that he will be nice yeah there's no nanabo my same colleagues can they will attest to this there's no evidence that it ends well with these things mm -hmm. uh, and and i think it is wrong even at a human a human level uh, besides being journalists just being people and human beings to try and vindicate a wrong by compromising positions when we all know that the prime minister is wrong and then we try to make him look right just because he has power. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that is at a human level. Simsita, we're not helping him as mm -hmm. a leader. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not helping him as as umfana um, or to, to to deliver a country. But wouldn't it, wouldn't he be sitting there and saying, uh, you have taken a very oppositionist approach to him. You could handle these matters. All he did was to suggest that there should be, a, uh, there should be state regulation, but you are coming across as very oppositional to him. Couldn't you cordially deal with this? Well, that is why then we hack back into the past when we talk about all politicians in the country who understood that every position they take, there will be somebody who will differ with them. Mm. It is in the nature of human existence that we can't all agree on the same thing. Once we do, something has gone wrong. Mm. You know, there has to be that. Uh, in fact, funny enough, we, we, we as editors once had a, a close session meeting with uh, the late Prime Minister Panabas, and we were discussing an issue. And he was telling us where government's position was and we started a discussion and in that discussion he said i think he was responding to one of my colleagues who had asked him a question and he said you know the day the media and government are friends something will have gone wrong with the country we can't we can't be friends <laughs> <laughs> profound <laughs> from him <laughs> but russell is trying to do that but he's not, he's not trying to make us his slaves. I mean, sorry, his friends. He's making us his slaves. Mm. Uh, for his comfort. So that is why he, he seems not to understand the position he's holding. I see where he is. Like he's there now, it's because somebody left. Uh, and and I, think, I, I think it's important that we, we all understand these nuances. And, 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 and uh, he, he will say, I'm opposition. I will say, I'm not opposing that. Just simply disagree and very strongly. Mm. Particularly, particularly, because as he says himself, 
for the last 20 years, there's nothing has been done about media regulation. Before he started attacking us, he could have picked up the phone and called the Minister of ICT, which was handling this thing for the last 20 years, and said, can I get a briefing on this? He would have found that once he knows the truth, he wouldn't have taken this position. But what's the truth? The public is interested. I mean, if the public says, I remember even when I was a journalist so many moons ago, there was an issue of media regulation. Uh, I remember at some point, Kwafuna Bo, Bo, um, uh, Justice um, the, the Masugu, which was to be an ombudsman and everything. 20 something years later, the public really is not going to be on our side. And you'll if, ask, if why has the media not self regulated? The public is entitled to ask that question. Yes. And the answer must come from us. But the Prime Minister, in asking that question, the answer is with the ministry that he foresees, he, he oversees. The fact that he has not bothered to ask them, but has instead gone on a rampage to attack the media, actually tells me that he's not being honest about wanting media regulation, that his problem is not about media regulation. It's other issues he's trying to deal with. Because if you wanted the truth, as I asked him at, 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 at the breakfast meeting, I was putting on, and even when I told him, he still rejected the explanation because the truth is inconvenient for him. But if I remember well, what happened was the whole process continued until towards its end. And then a matter came up. How do we fund this thing? Because a, a, a media, uh, getting more justice uh, uh, means you have to get an office, you have to get furniture, you have, to, you have a fully operational owner. And that thing needs money. It also needs goods whoever works there. Obviously, there'll be someone who receives the complaints from the public, who must a find those things well. and research. All these people must be paid, mm. including whoever adjudicates these issues. Whether he sits as a single uh, adjudicator or a team, those people need to be paid. So the problem was, how do we fund this? And here's what happened. It turned out that someone as small as I was, even then and as now, I said, I can't afford the money. Observer. Observer also was unclear because they also have financial problems. Mm -hmm. Then there was the Times. The Times was the only one that could bring in money. But the Times could not out of fairness to them and out of the whole, the credibility of the structure. Be the one that funds the things on it, single handedly. Yeah. Yeah. then say in times. Mm. Okay? So, and government, Swazi TV, radio, with the, only, with the other ones, Tunanzan. But in fact, they, the one government that, with the very same structure that Russell right now is head of. They said that Mbona Ngeba Ingene in media regulation. Ngalentela Lesishungai. Because Bona, they are controlled by government policies. So they so government wouldn't answer. In any event, even if they had agreed, let's say radio and television said, okay, we're in. The, 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 whoever is running radio and whoever is running Swazi TV cannot sign a check. <laughs> Not just ministry, it has to be cleared by parliament. It has to be put into the Minister of Finance budget. budget, which means it becomes a national, it means the taxpayer now must fund this thing. Mm. Yeah, well, it's a, which means other projects must fund. So th th there was a funding problem here. Mm. Okay? And that's where he should be saying, here's a million, here's 10 million, let's, get, let's work. But he's, the, he's not interested in that. He's got his own agenda to subvert the media for his own selfish ends. But, and but, that's why someone like me gets very upset with his attitude. Mm. But, but I mean, why this parliament? I know that some um, parliamentarians from, Swaz, from previously who were working in the media have disappointed you because they should have been the ones advocating for the media. But... Where is the voice of the bigger parliament? And it's not just about welcome alone. The, the, of, 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 
honorable uh, welcome i mean there are many people laba chama kwa media go radio i don't know this some some tv from the editors as well mr lshaba and others not even even those who are not even in the media even other mps in jege where is the voice of the mps to well, demand well if you if you are, if you look at what is going on in parliament the 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 people the people who have media experience and are now in parliament are trying to be useful to other mps better than was it in say at media say at kutsi ningayilungisa njani because everybody wants to look like they are useful so to be useless is to say go chani endani le media yeah ba yeah remember remember part of the history of this country the unfortunate history is that uh, it has it has morphed into something like if you don't agree with government if you don't agree with those in power then you are an enemy of the state so my my colleagues who have now become mps cannot be cannot see themselves in parliament calling out their colleagues calling out government ministers and saying ni wrong because pelanyalo they now serve the tingunda system they must be one of them and who's the enemy anyone in the media who second guesses them who questions them who calls them to account is an enemy so this country has been divided by people who are better guts bakwa chulo etibon bakana yabo so if we funa our mps uh, particularly coming from the media nabo just like all other mps in parliament they are hoping good say if there's a reshuffle in the next five years but taubonwa in horse they think therefore they will climb to the top on the back of miserable of the misery of the mm. media especially because the country is unhappy with the media post 2021 what but the truth of the matter is if you pay attention to the king himself and if you understand what a king is the king never owes anyone anything otherwise he wouldn't govern i kwene tani ngos but kune bandla bacoba ngothi if they do him one good turn he then owes them the king rules over 1.2 million people how many people want to do me a favor would set out set out bono wena because wena watsatsa pek makubo mfake jail in fact most of the people who actually threw me in jail and help either where are they yeah but baby the other thing that i want to talk about and it's good that you are an attending a lawyer now i'm sure you are going towards there and congratulations by the way but i'm not happy me in as much as him blame my prime minister in much as his blame my parliamentarians everyone the courts are getting away scot free what's your take are you happy with how the courts are interpreting the law and are they liberal enough to allow the media the latitude to criticize institutions of power to hold institutions of power accountable and also has the courts looked itself in the mirror in light of the events that led to you and Mr uh, Tulan uh, Masego in, in 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 prison in the mirror and said we must re- reflect ourselves on how we are treating the media i will tell you two things three first of all let's just remove the media yeah. when we talk about our courts mm. let's go and look at what's happening in the public commission of inquiry banvakala they are unhappy with the way Uh, the estates have been handled by the masters of the high court what we are not discussing is me as a student of law i read judgments coming from the courts i thought and by the way i enjoy reading judgments um and according to my lectures my interpretation of judgments is not shabby according <laughs> to my lectures <laughs> yeah <laughs> and let me tell you that part of Um, the vast the, the at the core of the problem with the masters court, high court and the corruption there is a mess that's been created by judgments coming from our courts they when families have come to the courts mm. with disputes over everything in family law the courts have messed up you know when you're a judge you you don't take decisions as 
something that is another day in the office. Good in for a now judge. You bring Solomon's wisdom to problems. Legal interpretation is a technique mm. that is deep. But also you, you, you explore new frontiers. Exactly. And what complicates the law in this country is that it is intertwined with our custom, mm. our customary law values. Mm. So it, ta- it, it demands more than just rudimentary understanding of legal process. You need to think. But what the judges have been doing, they, they, they deal with a, a problem on the table without thinking about the broader impact of that decision. Because there are many families in this country. There are many families where there are disputes, where bandu mm. fail. So when, when uh, you, are, you are dealing with a problem, and think it's unique, and then you are creating precedent yes, as well. And sending a message to other families. Yes. But you yeah. would see, so that would, in, in terms of the, the legal principles that govern this country, there's, there's confusion because the courts are not issuing judgments that clarify positions. Mm, so that's mm. the first problem. Mm. Second, you know, one time I was called by 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 someone, um, and and we had lunch, and 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 he says to me, uh, Marco, um there are certain judges that are complaining that you are too hard on them when you write articles criticizing their judgments, and that you you need to to be, if you can please tone down. Um, because uh, Nabo, they are still new. Some of them are still new. They are still Nangzan, and they feel I'm I'm asking of, of them more than they can deliver at this time. My answer to that chap was, if you've ev- if you had ever gone to prison and he had not, he would realize would say if somebody is going to sentence you to five years in prison, Uyopilalimbilo that is lived in prison being counted three times a day in Jengen Homo, being locked up at five o'clock in the evening, where sometimes even to go to the toilet, um, you need permission from someone who's young enough to be your child. And if I'm a fool, you can't do it. Then you realize, because this is not a game. Because when you sentence someone to five years in prison, you are taking five years from that person's life. And if after five years, when uh, because of Safunza, you'll realize you might have made a mistake. What happens to that person's life? Mm. Don't you? So mm. I said to him, this is not a game. There's, there's nothing like learning. You hit the ground running. If you are going to accept the position, then bring us Solomon's wisdom. Mm. If you don't have Solomon's wisdom, you can't decide. Being a judge is to decide. It is an extremely powerful position where you get to decide a person's fate where you decide people's fate, even in civil law, where they are fighting over a contract, where millions of Malangani are involved. Your job is to adjudicate and come up with a decision. And this country takes uh, court decisions very seriously. At least we still have that. Mm. And sometimes court decisions that are ridiculously wanting are respected anyway. When you can see what's just lelil kiletika, that's a good thing, but that's where we are. So, it's not just the media that's facing this problem. So, so yeah. So, when when the media is taken to court, as everybody seems to to do, where decisions are taken by judges, because now, but per se, this grudge, you see, I meet yet again, and and they want to sh- teach us a lesson. I mean, if you read, if you read uh, the Kelane judgment. Mm. That judgment is littered with anger and and, recrim- and, and retribution towards the media. Um, even even when you look at the, the judgment and and, 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 and what it, it it said that times must pay, you, you realize good see uh, did the same thing to me um, when I was taken to court by, by Ramon Ibedi. Banama Jaingaba, who's now chairman of the uh, uh, Supreme Court. When I inquire into the, into the master's office and he sits at the Supreme Court, they took me to, to court. And he, he, he gave me a fine that I, there was no way 
I, I could pay it. So you can see, you could see, they were trying to shut me down mm. so that I'd never operate again. Konabona, but Oktubega bendele labagwenda without anyone calling them out. And when they didn't fail to do that, they simply took the easier route and threw me in jail. You know? But uh, I want to check something. You know, I felt the media doesn't criticize this enough. Two cases. First one is the uh, Senzanga Court, Judge, Supreme Court. Mm. Goes there, makes submissions as by. Mm. I don't know why this is not criticized. There's no reason a judge should be doing that. Because. Uh, yeah. And then the second one, they are clear person in Fatwak. Um, where they make a judgment in the city, the camera is in court. And I felt we don't shine as much light, and the judges are getting away with murder. And uh, not even judges at the high court. We go back to the magistrate. If you look at how they treat ordinary people and everything, I do feel good there is something, there's no oversight enough. You know, it's part of the problem that you were asking me about earlier that even standards in, in the media have dropped. Mm. Okay? Because the reporters today, when they enter a newsroom to work, they are discouraged from looking at issues critically. Yeah. Because Akfanele Squati say, but parts believe people in power. I mean, if you take if you take here Nasenzanga Khan, he's a Supreme Court judge. Yeah. If you mess with him, what's going to happen when you come before him in exactly. two, three years' time with a Metodo appeal as a newspaper, as a media house, to say this matter was not given a fair hearing? at the high court, can you look at it? He will say, oh, watch, mm. I'm not going to be able to do it. And that judge, by the way, tried now to... the last, not the it, last, you know, it, it, and, and after him, him, there's no there's one. Nothing. <laughs> I mean, me and Angel, sitting here today with you, he tried to destroy my life when he was attorney general. We have a history with him. But I didn't back down. But he, 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 he made my life miserable. And he made... In fact, he, and I, he caused to be published a decree that said the media cannot go to court if the government has taken a decision to close them down. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, no. And when we won in court, when we challenged him in court, he appealed that decision, not because he thought the court was unfair, but because we as a publication couldn't Publish until the appeal was heard, and God knows when the appeal would be heard. So he was trying to shut us down. Mm -hmm. So the, this continued failure by people in power to shut down the media mm -hmm. is what is making everybody so desperate today. That is why um, those who have come later, Nabo, are frantically talking about media regulation. Everybody, because um, for some reason, in their minds, they want the media to be lapdogs. Maybe the one day they will, they, will, they will succeed in that. But I think um, I, I, I'm not going to get this for anyone. And for, so, for really being stubborn with the truth and the facts and uh, really pushing back. Because I still feel we would see there are a lot of things that our powers that be, and powers that be in this country is not just with political leadership. It's also about really questioning, you know, I don't know, and, and I'm speaking to you now as a lawyer. The law must not just be done, but it must be seen, uh, the justice must not just be done, but it must be seen to be done. Are you comfortable with the, with the Chief Justice who is also running around as in Vuna and adjudicating traditional issues and all of that? Or, or I'm just being unfair. I mean, let's, let, just, let's take out all, all our prejudices. Well, well, you know, I don't know what to say about him being in Vuna in Cuba and all that. But I do know, Uzi, you know, he once oversaw a case I was involved in, the one where he, 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 he came up with a fine that was so ridiculous it sought to shut me down. Um, you know, in that case, let me tell you something about the problem with this country. So that case was heard over two days, where I was supposed to show cause why I should not be held in contempt. Attorney General at the time, Macha Ingaba, he goes into court and tells Begi Mapalal in his submissions that this is in the year 2012, by the way. 
He says to he says to um, Peggy Mapala, who's an ordinary judge, then not chief justice. He says to him, he he as attorney general cannot be bound by the constitution on the powers he exercises. Okay. Two. In this country, we have a constitution. Fair enough. But Emaswat, they have not matured enough to, to, to appreciate constitutionalism. This is a meeting court. Yeah, he said it in court. <laughs> I'm, I'm not in the Yeah. In fact, my lawyer, a white man from South Africa, shot up and protested to Peggy Mapala. Because the authority he's using to push this idea of immaturity Emaswat is and is 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 a judgment that was issued in some African countries in the early seventies, and every lawyer worth his salt agrees with the, this is the most insulting judgment on a people by courts, and we among other would say in Swaziland as then as it was, it's being used as authority mm. to push to deny Maswat their constitutional right. This is the Attorney General of the country sitting. This is the same guy who goes and becomes a Supreme Court judge and issues judgments that have caused this confusion, the master, that he now comes and presides over to try and resolve. But also, to me, there is now a pushback from the lawyers and for everyone. Look, Makubu, I'm sorry we've spoken, spoken too long about the issue of the courts, yeah, but okay. I do want to, to make this whole last final point, now that you make it. How should we as the public interpret what's happening in the courts in, in respect to this master of the high court? Because I would have thought the authority to make this um, commission of inquiry would have been the minister. And then whoever party is unhappy can then take that to court. And the court then adjudicates on who is right or wrong, on the administrative powers or even on the substantive issues. But now the courts are the ones that have, or rather the chief justice, the one that has issued out uh, a commission of inquiry. Then if I am aggrieved or whether I'm master of the high court or whoever, can I not go to the same court and, 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 and want some... Like, I don't understand. And I, also, the law society makes the same point. Well, you know, um, I, there's a point I tried to make earlier, but I saw what you moved on. So let's go back to it. Yeah. Our society now is driven by money, not ideological, not values, not integrity. It's money. When you look at someone like Jenga Chief Justice, he's running his own fifth term. Some lawyers are protesting. But within that same legal law profession, there are lawyers. Mapalala has held uh, onto power because of this thing of revolving judges on a temporary basis. Mm. Being a lawyer in this country is tough. Mm. There's no money. It, it's got an oversupply of lawyers in this country. So getting business is hard. So getting a gig to be a judge for three months makes sense for a lot of people. So he's, he's managed to get loyalty from experienced legal people who have got issues, who, and, and who doesn't want, who, who has a law degree who doesn't want to be a judge, mm. even if for two minutes, and he has used that. So the public, and, and maybe we can also question, in a country where everybody is not allowed, because this thing about 1973 had the effect of killing debate, mm. killing curiosity, Killing ideology. When you're a lawyer, that will affect your level of thinking when you look at a case. How far are the boundaries to what, to a question of law you have to deal with? Um, and in other words, how much research can you do? How far can your research go? Do you have the energy for that? Do you have the intellectual argument for it? So perhaps as much as we can talk about the level of being journal journalism being low, we also need to ask the question of lawyering. <laughs> is it up there with the best where yeah. you can you can um, you can say no Ishai will and and challenge the judge even to his own prejudices to make that judge think, you know, 
uh, I've been to court many times um, in my life. It, it, for instance, you'll be surprised at how the judges at the, sub, at, at the High Court and Supreme Court treat senior counsel from both South Africa when they are there. You, 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 you are always surprised to see how they want to engage. But when it's local lawyers, a judge will sit for five hours and not say a word. And sometimes you're not even sure if he's still listening or not. Mm. Uh, and there's no intellectual discussion mm. between them. Um, let me give you an example. I, I, at a local level, Remember when I was famously going to court for ETT? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> in one session, Sports in Lamin mm, was magistrate. magistrate. I was represented by Bob Squad. The issue of the Road Traffic Act came up during uh, the, 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 the guy who got traffic, the guy who was in charge of traffic, where we had brought him to court. And so big interpret to my clauses. I'm and go so galeni in all up. Bob Bob na na lot traffic cop na magistrate. Because when you're dealing with the Road Traffic Act, you have to bring in the CPNE, the Criminal Procedure Act. Mm. The, boy three were quoting those laws. It with, was a beautiful if you're a student without, without without reading anything. Yeah. But say, tell me about section one. Yeah. Depend for the right point seven month. Yeah, you don't see that. Mm. Anyway, it was the only time where I saw local legal minds engaging mm. in interpretation, challenging each other. But yeah. okay, that's a, and person, by the way, knows the CPNA backwards and forward. I saw him at play, and he will challenge Pop and say, Pop, the section three one three, and it says this, and Pop would say, I know that section, and this is what I think. And this intellectual go the in the high court, mm, in the Supreme the, Court. The highest court. The, in the highest United. court. It was being done by a magistrate mm, who mm. has never even made a hard court judge. Mm. Look, mm. I think the one thing, you know, I, I used to be a reporter at the high court for a long time. Mm. The uh, two court judge judges, uh, I'm just making a comment, this is not a question, that I always enjoyed reading my judgments. Mm. Peter Danset. And uh, and Masug, uh, you know, they will chart new frontiers of the law, you know, and and even when they could even make a point outside of what was being debated, you know. So I agree with you that maybe I don't know whether it's an N73 or anything that everything is just substandard. The lowering, the charging men, the journalism, the politician, yeah. everything just went well, into substandard it, in it, this it country. It is the N73 because one of the things that have become a problem is that when you take naive people and give them positions of power, the guy who's the professional, who knows best, when he gives an opinion about what he knows best, the one who lobegi we angana experience anga tilu, to send this to Tati Sekba and Utsu Shwanche. How about the Tati Sa, the university langa funza kona, where I know best what I'm, you know? Minenje, if you ask me about the principle of it you might find that I would have to go and ask a, 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 a politician who has no idea what the word legality even existed. Nimkazele Nimangoba Ngoba Yang Buta is a reporter. Niti. And if it doesn't speak to what I learned from university, then I'm wrong. Ngoba Fanny Numblum Tala Abe right. Eskun then so see an artsy, but when a muelo what in law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. He must define mm. what you know best. That's what's wrong with this guy. Mm. And so people, in order to, 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 to protect their spaces, have acceded to this. So you ask the question, uh, what's going on? Why are courts doing what they do? It's not also restricted to the courts. It's the problem with this country is people who know, who are experts in their field, have allowed outsiders to encroach into what they know best. Mm, mm, no, I have to give it to you. I want to talk about something else, just back to the media. 
Let's think about the online space. Um, I mean, uh, people sometimes get sympathy to government because I wake up tomorrow and I call myself a journalist and I have 20,000 Facebook friends or group and I write anything. And it's got 20 million comments and that's it. We even quoted this. Chair. So then someone says, look, if I'm being written on Facebook, on Twitter, or podcast, or anywhere in the online space by someone supposedly a journalist, how do I first of all ensure that this person is indeed a journalist, this person ad ad adheres to the ethics and codes of journalism, and is regulated by the professionals, even if not the state, professionals in the field. So the, the online space has come to disrupt uh, the media, journalism, and uh, how do we as the media, as public, as government, as civil society, interface with the online space? You know, we, first of all, we have to agree on this. Leave any country, the petfe band, that is their home. Those who are in leadership are caretakers on behalf of band. Leave the band. So the phenomenon of, of social media, what it did was, and this is the world over, was it took away power from media and gave it back to band. That is why most media houses can no longer exist because of the, uh, because social media, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, people are now doing their own journalism. Mm. So a Twitter, for instance, a Facebook handle, let's Mangoba Ngwal, could be tomorrow Mangoba News. Mangoba, also at Kumanza That he then claims to be a journalist is something Uzamak Faranja, he's trying to look sexy. <laughs> but he, it, he could well be Mangoba mm. because the information he has won't change whatever label he uses. So what, what we saw with, with, with the rise of, of the social media was more participation of people in social discourse and people therefore being able to have their say on issues that bother them where there's no restriction to them because the government can't control social media. So whether you call it Swazile News or Manoba News, it could well be a post by Pegmaku or Manoba Numar. It doesn't really matter. It's just people having their say and they're using this medium that has taken over the world and has threatened traditional media. Traditional media today is struggling to survive because of the onslaught of... In this country, there, in particular, when we speak to people like Russell, we'll say we've been fighting for 20 years to survive because government has been on of us. Who have seen a gap. We're a capitalist society where people are allowed to take opportunities. You can wake up tomorrow and uvule a spaza shop at the corner of the street where you live because you see a market. Now, but they've seen a market in the media space through social media and they've set up shop there. That's what a free market economy does. That is why you are left to your own devices. It's now a tough chap. Now if you succeed, good for you. It's free market. The frustration and I think the problem with people is there is now a new medium. That you can't control. That they can't control. Mm. <laughs> and they are complaining. But it's in the jar. It's in the bus control. But how, how, how responsible the, the, then? The problem is, when you are in power, don't think you are God. Ban for Abasibo Bako. When we ban, and they decide your fate. With social media, one of the things that I often laugh about is you can leave Losis Losabenda in Lingako, Excel. Utsunga figure office about post deal, actually, of any won't know what's in. Because we've been so done. So whether spong in the lo seven dagako so musizagele in forty five minutes na sega shogutsu umgoleganjan could well 
morph into being uh, uh, in the news in the afternoon. But how do we then... It, social media came and gave people power. It democratized information and uh, all of that, 100%. But how do we balance up with being responsible? Because we could very well have your underwears plashed on public because bongile and therefore you are now subject of, of gossip and everything. And I'm saying this because there's a very interesting case of uh, Baseta Nekumalo, I think, in South Africa, mm -hmm. who's, who's taken this woman to court. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this woman, uh, she wrote lies about her. And she, I, I saw she was writing about uh, how it affected him her, her husband, her children, and everything, all of these lies. And I know it's not a phenomenon unique to Swaziland. Everyone is dealing with the problem of social media, misinformation, and all of that. But locally, how do you deal with it? Uh, especially not just those who call themselves just social media, but those who call themselves news, like the breach, like uh, whatever, whoever else, whoever else, I want to mention names. We could very well just use our platform to lash at anyone, we call ourselves the media, but if I'm using a personal pers personal Facebook, I can post anything. How do we balance up the democratization of information and being responsible for people's mm -hmm. dignity as well? I, I, I worry about the use of the word responsible. Okay. I worry about the use of the word responsible. What is being responsible? Because um, well, as I told the Prime Minister last week that Mineja in my track record, I've always been thorough in checking my facts, but I still went to jail, and I'm the only one who went to jail. Um, who is, how can you say I was irresponsible to the extent that I deserve to spend time in jail? So the question for me is, who is supposed to be responsible? Let me tell you who is supposed to be responsible. The person who's been said, leave. That's the person who should be responsible. Mm. Let's take, for instance, mm. when we speak, when we speak of social media and what you are saying, Guna Nai Group Nai Kutsuwa Lady's house, where I'm told if you are a man, you are not allowed in. Google uh, Gobana a short period, Labek Mati Makona, where things were said. And then men started the men's house. And then the whole thing went to war until a truce was called. So both sides, the whole thing reached a crescendo where it deadlocked, right? And then Labanye decided to be bigger and exit the space because Aksaki. Okay. Now, <laughs> and, and because of the nature of, 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 and this is a country, by the way, where sort of is, they say we are, we are number five in Africa as the unsafest country for women. for women. But men who were being lashed at women who laid this house could not form a group and go and beat up women because of the dynamic that is social media. But in the end, I think men lost. That's why they exited the space because they realized So the, the, point is, the, the, the point that I'm making is who should be responsible? Is it me because I have a view and I want to vent? Or and the one when, uh, my job, my duty is to protect your feeling when, you're, when you are making my life miserable. I don't think so. Now you have a responsibility to say, for Makubu not to write badly about me on Facebook, for this girlfriend of mine, Kutsanga Negi, who made this house, Kutsanga I must start making her life miserable. But perhaps also you are raising a very profound point. I had never thought like that. Actually, what social media did was that it finally opened up to the society to talk. And remember, we are, we are a society that which been, since 1973 yes, it has been locked. And for the first time, you this platform... Human yeah. beings, by their nature, you can't shut them up. People start talking, start mouthing words. I think number one and a half to two years. Human beings. Mm. Once we figure three years without mouthing anything, mm. 
When I was so young, 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 I was And if we claim to be the Christians we are, we need to respect. I mean, I would say the people who fight even this freedom of speech, they, 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 they thumb Bibles every Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, one last one, Mr. Makubu, I'm very pleased. I don't want to take too much of your time. You are, you are hated by the government. No one hates you, really. But I'm just saying uh, there are just people who feel that you threaten their space. In, from the power that be. But you seem not to also be a friend of those who want political change because you also happen to have very high standards there as well. Uh, has that surprised you? Uh, because, because whenever I speak what I consider my truth, it is not... 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 No, we have changed. We have changed. It's not about that. I'm also going to tell to a crowd in Chelawena because I like to think we're trying to solve a problem. For instance, as you asked earlier, I seem to be alone in this problem. Yeah, 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 Prime Minister who's assaulting the media. I'm not playing to any gallery. I'm simply defending a principle because I fundamentally disagree with him. And I think we need to tell him it's not about now. Now, Fig and who's my friend, we chat, we argue now. But I listen to him too, as much as I listen to the Prime Minister and, and others. I, but I tell him, no, 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 no. It's, it, it's wrong. Because the idea is, I, I, you know, I, I know the kind of people, and this is what has destroyed this country. Very well educated people who earn good money and live the good life. They walk into a room and address people according to having read the room. And and it earns them respect in some quarters. But if truth is what we are told it is in the Bible, then it's the truth you must stand for. Mm. Not a popularity contest. Mm. Not I don't know, maybe maybe then you mistake Leng Nayo. It's good to say when I interact with people, I'm not expecting them to open their wallets or open a drawer and give me a, 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 a brown envelope. In fact, none, none of them have. In fact, I dare anyone to say, well, I'm a brown envelope. <laughs> but you know, everybody wants money. But the point is, I'm going to tell you, to tell you what you want so that you can give me a brown envelope. Mm. I'd rather you pay me because I've told you the truth. Yeah. That would be nice. <laughs> not for me. So, you see... <clears throat> Because particularly because journalism, let's go back a bit to the question of responsibility. Journalism, by its nature, it's not writing what Makubu wants. It's feeding the same 1.2 million people that Russell is, in, is, is, is responsible for. And it would, it's a crime, then, to feed them nonsense, to feed them lies, to feed them convoluted information, to feed them information that seeks to serve a particular agenda that's personal to you. It is as criminal as the prime minister trying to suppress information to the public. So there is that response. Give the public the truth. Ungaling is Simacha Ingaba who said, Emaswati are not matured enough to understand, to appreciate constitutionalism. Don't assume they are fools. Logutse Maswati Atitule does not make us fools. Because it's just a tool. And by the way, I think we are the most dangerous people. In oh, our yeah. history, if you look at the history, you must read about how this country came to be the modern state it is. It was started by King Somthol. It started with him. You should read the books that speak to that history. Kute Botsotsi Labanje Nge Maswati. No, serious. Yeah. So be careful Nge Maswati. As we are not a country in this southern African region. We are a small people. That's not because somebody was nice. It's the cunningness of the leaders we had. Mm. So be careful. But I also worry, uh, having said that, I also worry about this. In this country, 
with the problems that someone like Russell speaks about, what happened to 20 years? A, dam a major damage has occurred in this country. That's why I need to mean Russell like I see honest and and it has nothing to do with controlling the media and bringing the media to be more responsible. In the 20 years, La University, and I challenge you to go there, and my students are called, do not want to take print journalism as a speciality because they say it's a risky business. Because imagine, given good success of Bo will come back to what busy happening on this thing because now I'm not also petty agenda. Linga kulu abagna. Banwa na labanga ne today. Uti raselia and bafunza and banwa. Banwa abanga ne basle sifunze. Once go by print journalist is risky to your life. Agna future you end up in jail. That's what they are saying. Go to university. Yeah, so and 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 imagine umana who wants to be a writer. Because writing is beautiful. People write books and make millions. So being a writer, in a small magazine, being a writer can be a lot of things. It's a worldwide thing. But now, if you go to the house, you can't specialize in print journalism. You can't do it. Who is killing the profession? Is it Peggy because he, he went to jail? Or is it the guy? Who has got? Who thinks he has absolute power, and abuses his power to satisfy his own inner inadequacies? But Jack Peggy, uh, uh, this is the last one. Uh, if someone were to say, "Apple, come on, baby, we wash our wings, let's get over it," uh, why should we be reminded if the other other time we go to an wash? Because it, it's not as if it's something I talk about every day. Okay. But when somebody like Russell starts talking about regulation and media. And you can see, would say, eat the pennies on them, gunungu lentil and down. We have to remind him, would say, but the twenty years don't fun now, and and he has absolutely no idea what happened over the last twenty years because he thinks that being a prime minister gives him divine wisdom. We are so we are. Usulega boot, yeah, bo. Ngaya Russell ati everything just because some prime minister for three months. Fanela boot. So stamchela kutsi bino be saboshwa in the meantime. Bino twenty minutes. The sasebende mache, the sasebende mati kre, the sasebende lo. The onslaught on our on this profession has been intense. It has been nangza. We've been going to uh, you've been going to court. Si defend the matter la le sitte won. Being fined uh, by courts out of vindictiveness as happened good times. He observer. Let me tell you, mache inga ba issues a judgment. Lamsa Uma Uchery was master trying to adjudicate it, thinking her team beat them up families. Who keep in judgment against the observer worth 300,000 in Malang? Was it the one he gave to Alvius? Yeah. Oh, that was ridiculous. And he says himself, by his own words, but that's 300,000. He caught order. But it's sure you're not good. You see the hypocrisy, making people, saying the things that people want to hear. Clearly, corner been bugging. Maybe not say Alpheus is a government spokesman, he has power. Tiabona go set it. Tiabula pele, but go tell Kana. I mean, well, she can't pay it. Sasa sota obu ya kumple na le media, sika ibu yewe. Yes, sasa si kumple na kusi patle chasment ya ikulu umle. Ite, ite mungulungulu. Tiha, minangendi wanjalo, hambo bosho. You know? So people, so when we speak of responsibility, those are the people who say, we, we must be helping more to the powers that yes. be. Than but to. the media also equally has a, dis, a duty to, to be responsible by getting its facts right. Yeah. It has that. And you, as someone who leaks information, the whistleblower hmm. have a duty to the media so that we get it right. Thank you. I think that's the best way to conclude it. Thank you so much, Mr. Makova. I really appreciate it.